say, uh, my name is Tristan and I'm tuning in with uh, Co Network. My name is Liam and I'm tuning in with Co Network. No, well, your company. Uh, I'm <laughs> doing. Okay, one more time. My name is Liam and I'm tuning in with BitScoop Labs and LiveScope. Your turn. Tuning or tuning? Tuning. Yeah. Tuning, tuning, tuning doesn't matter. Let's go. I'm Alex and I'm tuning in. Wait, what? <laughs> That's <laughs> this is why we have it. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is going. This is live. This I'm, is not live, but it's gonna um, not be edited. So it I'm, will be. No, it won't be. Yes, it will be. <laughs> I'm tuning in with the machine learning society. How about that? Boom. With the. With the machine. I'm Alex and I'm tuning in with the machine learning society. Hey guys, so we grabbed Liam over here after his uh, panel discussion and we really had a couple of questions for him. Um, he seems to know a lot about the internet, VR, uh, AI, and uh, we wanted to ask you, well, what is the future of the internet in, in your eyes? So I think that uh, there's, a, there's a wonderful trend happening right now. We're moving towards a convergence of artificial intelligence, blockchain, big data, virtual reality and augmented reality, all in this open distributed format. And uh, I'm really wanting to uh, help influence the way that this moves in the next few years, because I think that there's a incredible opportunity for us to build these new emergent experiences. You know, a lot of people call it the web 3.0 or the metaverse or, but, uh, or the singularity, but I, I really think what it's going to be is we're going to have a literal revolution, a transformation as society as the internet uh, completely subsumes everything around us in a, in a way that we've never seen before. Um, I don't want to drone on like some futurist, you know, like Grace Kurzweil, but I think that we are hitting a very strong inflection point, and it's right now. So, so you started off with a bunch of words like blockchain, AI, VR, and uh, as an event host myself, uh, whenever I post them on Reddit, I literally get 20, 30 comments that say, how many buzzwords can you fit inside of one sentence? Why are these buzzwords or not buzzwords? So, uh, yeah, the, the, the whole soup of, those, uh, uh, of all of those things being brought together is pretty nebulous for most people. But I would say it's actually a convergence of best of breed technologies over the web. I would say, you know, uh, just going down the line, some, some choice examples of revolutions happening fully distributed software over blockchain and, and data storage and identity, things like EOS, IOTA, Alpha. Um, uh, I would say artificial intelligence like TensorFlow and, and deep neural networks and crazy distributed learning systems. And uh, I would say with AR and VR, the WebXR revolution and what's happening right now with uh, browsers and, uh, and the headless web, uh, I would say big data is is blowing out in all of the directions I, uh, in in all the industries I just mentioned, and in all new directions where where very very deep uh, uh, interaction, uh, where new types of data and streaming of discrete formats are all coming online right now. I could go into uh, you know hours of resolution of what I think of each of those in industries is actually coming to and how they're all going to interconnect and what the timelines are. But uh, suffice it to say, the real broad scope is right now it's a seminal moment in the history of, of the digital world and our world because uh, when these things start to connect in a deep way, when AI and blockchain come together, when big data and AR and VR come together, um, they will reverberate off each other when, you know, when, and, and when the, the others start to interact with one another. They'll all start to create, the, you know, the singularity is the best word for it. So what do you think about um, people's mind being changed regarding technology in terms of the more technology develops, the more people become afraid of it. Like you mentioned that you trust your Alexa less and you feel like you control your Alexa less. What do you think about this, and how do you think your technology, your project, will not fall into that path where people will lose trust with it the more powerful it becomes? You know, it, there's all this unknown I don't know about what I'm building. Um, 
the, the, the real story is, I don't know where this is going even in 12 months, but the only influence I can have is to make things more open, more decentralized, uh, uh, more towards that trust and control. Really where it ultimately lands, I'm not sure. I, I, I look at, at very uh, concerning trends, you know, like, uh, like automating the way of jobs, um, complete sensor integration to, to a very, like, beyond what Orwell could ever, George Orwell could ever imagine. And the only thing I can do is try to tack the, this, the stream of history that's moving at light speed uh, towards, towards a more equitable outcome. And uh, that, that's really what LifeScope is. It's not an answer, it's more like a, uh, uh, it, it, it's more like a hope. And, uh, and with that in mind, let, let's go shoot things, you know. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the next question was, what happens to the people that uh, uh, um, don't believe in, uh, that call it a buzzword? Um, you know, um, <laughs> the, the way I see it is, uh, you know when a tsunami happens, the tide goes out? And the people who put the lifeguards are the first to know on the beach because they know exactly what the, when all the tide goes out, they they start screaming. Uh, I on, feel on, like the, on Wall Street, like, we also have a saying where uh, when the tide goes out, you see who's swimming without pants. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's it's one of those it's 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 uh, it's one of those things right now where I feel like I I I see a tide going out, like I'm Chicken Little, and I'm like. We all better build surfboards and boats because the tsunami is coming, everybody. And and that's I, I hope everybody listens. And I and I'm trying to build like you know an ark, you know, yes. for for the for the layman. So, so, so talk about the building. Um, that's a lot of mixed metaphors right there. Yeah, <laughs> keep going. Uh, you, you you mentioned uh, you mentioned that it's all open source. Uh, anyone can uh, fork it, and anyone yeah. can contribute. So is there any advice you can uh, give developers to jump to your code, understand it better, and maybe you can outline like what are your expectations from those developers in terms of which skill set do you they need, which backgrounds can yeah. be good to uh, be contributing to this project? Yeah, I would say um, the the beginning place to go is digital identity. You know, every app has a user management system. There's a list of people who sign up, and really deciding how you're going to do that. Um, is, is really crucial. It defines your app. If your apps sign in with Facebook and the way that you sign up to that app is you have to have a Facebook account, that's, that's a dangerous thing today. And um, if, if you're having people sign up with an email, um, you know, you're, you're a bit better, but people want to have a contextualized, deeply connected uh, uh, application. And I would say, look at LiveScope as a potential way to, to have a digital identity as, as a stepping stone towards a more objective digital identity. So there we have it, um, an interview with uh, Liam.